Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. There he is, the Rhino himself up, is back. back. Alex Boone. Hey, What's funny is, don't. so we've been we've been recording these trenches episodes, these film breakdowns here. Purple Daily YouTube channel, probably the best place to consume these if you're listening on the audio side. A lot of visuals on these, but uh, you just got done putting the kids to bed, a little nighttime reading, and uh, you said you might be sleepier than the kids here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wake you up. We're gonna dive into some. So pe- people are clamoring for uh, for a breakdown of the Vikings Jets film from like a week and a half ago. A lot of things have changed for the Jets since then. Oh, you know, they God. just traded for Devonte Adams, dude. But there's some things to peek at here, and we'll get into it. And by the way, you can find Booney and Jeremiah Searles, the O line committee YouTube channel and podcast. A uh, couple former NFL offensive linemen talking about football from a trenches perspective, breaking down film. So. O-Line Committee YouTube channel. Check that out. Good evening, sir. Oh, it's great to be here. I can't believe you said I was sleepy. It was only because we were reading this book. And I was like, I swear to God, dude, I started drifting off. And she looked at me like, are you awake? And I was like, I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm up. <laughs> then I was like, Phil, I'll be on 15. God, I can't wait to talk football. But you, hey. should, you should really start reading the playbooks. Just reading, <laughs> reading. Reading the, right, the, the, the 2009 49ers rookie season. Yeah. Hey, we were talking about something today. Not to get off topic, but I love to. We were talking about something today, and Johnny was telling me about someone's dad, and he was like, yeah, well, he can do this or something. And I was like, oh, that's cool. He's like, do you know how much cooler that is in you? And I was like, probably pretty cool. And he like kept digging, digging, and digging. And I go, yeah? Does he know the difference between a cover one? Does he know the difference between a one and a two? Yeah. How about a four? I go, Johnny, does he even know what the fuck a cover six is? How <laughs> dare you come at me? I was like. He Does he like, know the difference between inside zone dude, and power so duo? Get, and <laughs> tell me the difference between counter and power right now. Go ahead, off, off the top of your head. Do you even know? You don't. What's yeah, stutter? You don't. you don't even know about stutter. <laughs> That's right. You're worthless, <laughs> worthless dude, human no. being. No, <laughs> hey, but seriously, so much going on right now in the NFL, and it is, dude. I mean, all the dude, trades today: Devonte Adams, Amari I, Cooper, I, Cam I'm, Akers. I'm, pl- I'm planting a flag on this right now that I just don't see that Jets thing getting better, and I'm going to tell you why. Number one, Aaron Rodgers is the behind it. I'm just gonna be straight with you. I just I used to love playing this guy. Like I used to love it because you went in there like, this is anyone's fucking game. I don't know what's gonna happen. But I know this dude's gonna sling it. We're gonna hit him a million times. It's not gonna matter. He's still gonna sling it. We're gonna do what we do. Like you knew it was gonna be a dog fight, and now you're like, I don't even know if his O line can hold up. I mean, you look at some of these plays, and we're going to obviously go through some of these clips from London, but you talk about some of the sacks that he took, and not only that, but the interception and, like, the mistakes that they make. Like, I just don't think one guy can fix all that. And I'm sorry, but you don't have a run game, and you don't have an offensive line that can protect up front. And there's, dude, this last game they had, like, 14 penalties. They didn't even, they declined some, too. I was like, this is a record. And I'm not saying that all of them are real or whatever, whatever, but at some point someone on the team needs to be like, hey, that's enough. That is way too many. Like, we need to either just stop touching people or stop doing whatever the hell we're doing, but stop it. And I just don't think that that's a big thing. But not only that, but they talk about Amari Cooper going to the Bills. Yeah, it's crazy. Dude, I, I, I kind of love that. Teams are getting the sexier. So I, I love that. I love that trade, especially for him. I'm so happy. Anyone that can get out of Cleveland right now, and this is coming from a Cleveland person, <laughs> born in Cleveland. A guy who got out of Cleveland? Cleveland <laughs> Roots got out. And I was like, you know what? They want that guy there running the show. I'm out. I dare they. I could gag in my mouth right now. But honestly, what doesn't make me gag in my mouth is the Vikings. And how excited well, I am for this And this game this, week. this weekend is going to be, you've got Lightning. two of the top four best teams in the NFL. Dude, the Lions. The we could even, I. you think so? I mean, I'm Do you think be, these are the two best? Well, the Chiefs, I mean, the Chiefs. Listen, the Chiefs are the Chiefs, and, and I, I'm going to shoot myself in the foot here. I mean, at some point, I'm like, how much luck do they have? You know what I'm saying? Like, is you're it luck really, with the Chiefs? It's not that it's luck. It's just the fact that their defense is incredible and Patrick Mahomes can make things happen. But I wonder, can that defense handle itself versus a very run-centric offense? Because a lot of what it does is try to get you into different mismatches and then it's like, oh, well, here comes Trent McDuffie off the edge or now he's inside. Oh, my God, where's Chris Jones? Oh, my God. And it's like in the run game, nobody gives a shit. 
oh, this guy's coming off the edge. Well, guess what? We're going to go this way then. <laughs> Stupid. Like, it just makes things easy. And at the same time, when you talk about a defense that's able to pin their ears back and get after the quarterback, you can't do that in the run game. You got to be smart. You're taking hits from every which way. And that's why it's like, I, I, dude, don't get me wrong. Until they unseat people, they're the top two teams of three. I would put those two probably ahead of the Ravens. Only because I've seen what the Ravens have happened to the Ravens. But it's like when you look at these two teams, man, they're different. Like what what the Lions just did to the Cowboys. Yeah, it's – now criminal, Aiden bro. Hutchinson being out is going to be bad. massive for them. Now they could it, – it's not going to happen for this game, but there's some rumors out there. I mean, hell, the, the Raiders, could they trade – could the Raiders just start over and trade a Max Crosby, Miles Garrett? That. So you got these teams that are selling off parts, but I don't think Miles goes. But I could see Max going. I've heard there's a lot of anarchy out there going on right now, and people are very yeah. upset, and that they're just things are not going well. And I mean, dude, we kind of saw all that coming, right? Like when you don't go out and get a quarterback, and you need a quarterback, how long do you think a team's going to be like, oh, yeah, we're fine, we're fine, we're not fine"? Like I don't care how many zeros that check says, I can only handle so much before your brain goes kapoomy, right? Like you're just they're like. Oh, dude, I watched him play Pittsburgh. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. By hey, the way, did Mark, they not da- Mark know Davis Watt was on the other side. Did they not know he was over? I just no, you no. might want to take some notes before that game. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Davis with his goofy little haircut today on the Raiders side. He said uh, we traded Devonte Adams for Tom Brady because Tom Brady officially became a minority owner of the paperwork went through. It's like I'm not sure that's how that works, Mark. You know, I but think, I think you're an idiot. I'm just going to be honest with you, and I don't really give a shit what anyone says. You and the Browns guy, you both could take a long walk off a short bridge <laughs> for all I give a fuck. Dude, so let's get let's, some Vikings. We'll, we'll pull up some Vikings film. I do want to uh, shout out AG1 here real quick. AG1, appreciate their partnership on Purple Daily. Uh, it's all about taking care, your, uh, taking care of your health. It shouldn't be complicated. AG1 simplifies this. By replacing multiple health supplements like multivitamins, digestive aids, immune support, uh, puts it all into one simple scoop or one of the travel packs that I've been showing off on the show here. Trusted by top athletes all over the world and uh, top podcasters, uh, <laughs> AG1 is a simple and comprehensive foundational nutritional supplement for whole body health. It's been uh, almost eight years of AG1 in my repertoire. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash purple daily. That's drinkag1.com slash purple daily. Also, a shout-out to Nicolay Law, the exclusive personal injury law firm of Purple Daily. Nicolay Law knows that when you or a loved one gets injured, life can come to a stop. Things can get complicated. That's where Russell Nicolay and his great team come in to help you get the compensation you deserve after an accident. So, again, if you've been in an accident or a loved one, you can start your path to winning at NicolayLaw.com or give them a call at one eight five five nicolay All right, I'm going to go full screen here. Here we go. Uh, this is the first time, and I'll bump this banner here so we get the full shot. Mm. So this is the first time on Purple Daily here that we have looked at some oh, of these ridiculous right. plays from the London okay. game. Okay. Dude, no, so, oh, dude, I just got so excited. <laughs> this is, we're going to start with the pick six here because we want to oh, get your yeah. thoughts on how the gangster pulled mm-hmm. off his second pick six of the season, and then I'll mix in some offensive plays here too. But right. uh, I'm going to let you all right, roll Booney, this, here we go. And then, and then listen, I'm taking everybody to school. So sit down, put a dip in, get a notebook. <laughs> we got time. He's got a long time to run. Think look about it. This, you got, you got time to man. pull a chair up. Here we go. That golden hair. That There's mane flowing in the British worse wind. Than watching that as an offensive lineman. Pause. Here we go. This is one of my most favorite things to do. Is this is like the chess game between the offense and the defense? Who's coming? Who's not coming? We've talked about this. Look at all these numbers. You got a twenty number in there, a fifty, a forty, a ninety. I mean, you got everybody up there. And at the same time, everyone's thinking the same thing. Is that Harrison Smith on the left? What the hell is Harrison Smith doing at the end of the line, right? Like, at some point, this is what they want to do. They want you to see him, and they're like, what's going on? Is he coming? There's no way he's coming. There's no way he's coming. He's going to drop back into the deep third, whatever it is. We're not really going to change a lot unless number eight tells me to change something. I'm going to stick with my base rules, right? 
I have an overload over here. I'm going three for three. So the center, right guard, right tackle, we are all setting to the right. We're going to handle that. We know there's going to be a twist in there somewhere. But what we're doing on the left is we're giving Tyron Smith to 58. And then we're giving Simpson to 51 or 44. Now, it depends. Some teams do things differently. On some teams I played with, we would have dueled this. A duel tells the guard, a duel or a sort, tells the guard he has to read the most dangerous of those two. 44 is always the most dangerous because he is the closest to the quarterback. Number one rule of football, nobody is ever allowed to walk through the A-gap without permission, ever. It's just not possible because what does that do? It scares eight. Coming through the B-gap, I could probably get away from that. But coming through the A-gap is very hard to get away from. So we don't ever let them do that. Now, some teams will say, hey, we're just going to make 44, bring him down. A lot of teams like to make you go out and let the back step up. Pretty sure that's what they're going to do here. Now, listen, I know everyone's like, oh, when you go, you see him. Blah, blah, blah. It's, all, it's all bullshit. This is what sells this. And we've talked about this on the OLC. And it's very hard to stop. And I've even said this for years and years. And I brought this up. When Van Ginkle takes these two steps... In a very chaotic moment, you are thinking he's mine. You don't think anything other than he's mine. See, even though he's leaning away, and in the meeting room, we would have taken note of that. Like, hey, as soon as you see his shoulders drop, you got to go somewhere. But in the moment, it's so hard to do that. Because you're like, is he really dropping? Did that guy just take two steps and drop? What's he doing? But it's not that what he's doing. Number one, he's eaten up one of the offensive linemen. So yeah. that the slide is now going to the right. Why? Because we're overloaded to the right. We have to. Can't give a back to one of these big dudes. Then we get fired. Right? Like this is an automatic. That's why somebody came out earlier and was like, oh, they're reading the protection. They know they're going to go three for three over here. They're not stupid. They're going to put a big guy on the back. How dare them? But what this does is it eats up an offensive lineman from keeping you going the other way because now you got one off the edge who's hot. This is going to come back to really hurt someone later. We'll talk about it. Don't worry. Yeah. And then so, so yes, it, and Rodgers throws hot, but if, you know, Harrison Smith is essentially a free runner on this play, and that Correct. will come into play later. But what else so, can we talk about this defense is if you're going to be this kind of guy, if you're going to be the chess master, everybody has to know what they're doing. Not one piece can ever be out of place because if it is, it's a strike for you. Yeah. You know what I'm By saying? By the way, like, think about offensively, Brian Flores, man. He, he's making you do these mental exercises for three hours every oh, single yeah. play, right? Well, it's a Now, lot, explain right? to us, Rodgers is looking out to, yep. I, I just think it's, to get Con- it's Conklin and Garrett Wilson out to the right. And we I can go wide to on this too. I'm almost okay. positive it's Lazard. And what that is, and that's the old Carson Palmer. And he used to hold up one finger or two fingers. And it used to tell the receivers right away, you're hot. So he's telling them, hey, if one comes on this side, you're hot. And so instantly they're looking at Van Ginkle like, oh, okay, that's our guy. So the minute that he holds that one up and Van Ginkle takes two steps, we've instantly, we're running our hot route. We're going hot. And Carson Palmer used to do the same thing. He'd point at the guy to let him know, like, if this guy comes, we are running our hot route. So they see him go. So they're like, look, they're all looking in right now. We're hot, we're hot, we're hot. But what Brian does such a great job Gar- of. Garrett's looking in and Conklin's looking to block, right? So this is supposed to go to, to five here to Garrett Wilson. You would Wilson. think that this would be some sort of like a slant and a go, and the go is going to push off the safety, and then the slant can get behind it and turn up as fast as he can. But what's great about this, and we've talked about this, is Van Ginkle knows exactly what the hot route is, and he knows exactly where it's being thrown, and he knows that he's dropping. <laughs> Nobody else knows he's dropping. And so he just perfectly jumps right into this route because let's be honest, if he doesn't catch that, that might have gotten caught. I don't know what happens, but I know that six going the other way is demoralizing for you. Actually, actually, I remember when we looked at this for OLC too. So if Van Ginkle doesn't drop, so let's say, let's say Rogers is right and Van Ginkle's coming and Rogers signals correctly, hey, we're throwing hot here, right? For the for the viewers here, watch Garrett Wilson. I think this is a touchdown. If he if it, if it's not a pick six, I think it's a touchdown. Jets. Yeah, no, I think it is too. So bang, so balls out, balls out. Imagine Van Ginkle's not there. Garrett Wilson catches this pass right here, and he's got a block from Conklin, 
Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's if it's not a pick six, it might be a touchdown. Dude, this is incredible. And it's super fun when you can look at stuff like this because, and we've talked about this, there's not a lot of defensive coordinators that are this smart because they know it takes a lot of work. You're going to have to put a ton of film in. And you kind of said it today on OLC when you were like, uh, when you talked about the media, went after him, I was like, oh, you know, this is a, this is, what did they say? This is a, uh, uh, well, they they were asking. You talking about the Flores quote? Yeah. Well, or, what did they ask him? Like, this is a loaded. They said, "Hey, this is yeah. This this offense you're about to face. Do you have to make any adjustments?" And he kind of he smiled and took a second. He goes, "I tend to fight fire with fire." And that's, that's exactly what it is. It's the chess match. Adjustments. For, for, like we at times think that they're playing checkers and we laugh at the defense. But when you see a defense like this, you're like, "No, these guys are smart. They know what they're doing. They're never going to be out of position." And that sometimes scares you because you're like, "What else do they know?" You know they know all your routes, they know all your concepts, they know everything. And I can say for an honest fact, Flores is a really cool dude. He's in the his kids play for EP football, and so I see him at practice every now and then. He's, dude, he is so chill. Like I so love it. Chill. He's got a scowl on his face all the time. He looks just he's like he's gonna kid. get a head job at some point again, uh, dude. He's why gonna. would you say that? Why can't he just stay here for a couple? No, of I years? want him. He, I want him um, here for like no, you for don't. like three Look more years. You. You, you want <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Uh, let's go to the offensive side of the ball here in here the deep go. red. Oh, the deep right, little, oh, I had to show dude, you this. I, you your had guy, to show the As soon as I saw him score last week, I got so excited. I go, Phil doesn't put this on. I'll <laughs> kill him. Hey, shout out to my dude, Ham. I love him. CJ Ham. He's one of the nicest guys in the world. This is a simple fullback belly, but it's got a lot of, lot of whoa, window dressing to it. There it is. You got a little jet motion. We got a little guy running outside, but look how beautiful that lane is. Dara saw. I see you, buddy. Eating one for the team. Who is that? Is he going against Clemens? Yeah. Let's see here. Clemens talks a lot of shit, too. Did you see that game last night? God, they were going at it. Got a jam front. It's very classic. Solid front. Jam. Trying to put a so lot of jam. Pressure. So jam being head yeah, up the on core the center. Covered. Anytime you and say then... jam, the, the th- three interior guys are instantly covered. God. So, like, it's, it's, so so these people, two guys are going to be in the B gap. Correct. And the nose okay. will be head up. And at times he can be shaded if he wants, but they're not really shaded because then you would favor a side. But uh, this is a classic defensive front. This is a great job kind of, I'm going to say, absorbing this blow because the guard kind of leaves. But it's also a great job of Ham getting through and taking the hit. Like Josh Oliver, by the way, is here specifically as a run-blocking tight end. Does a nice job there, too. A great job holding him up. Look at that. Dude, we watched some film. Does he, does he get a snack deadline. in the offensive line room for that block? Dude, you, you can come in and get some snacks for that, dude, for sure. You can get some Skittles. Come out of here. So oh, here's another one. We got everyone oh. just, just chilling think, up here. I think I know what's going to happen. Look, they're all like, guys, guys. <laughs> this is the funny part, right? At one point, somebody on the O line was probably like, guys, guys, this is the one where he's going to drop out. <laughs> and everybody forgot the 22 came off the edge last time. I swear to God, they did. They were like, this is it. Yeah. This is the luck. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the same look as the pick six, right? You got mm-hmm. Van Ginkle jammed up here in the B gap. You got Harry over here off to the edge. Aaron's looking at Van Ginkle too. He's like, is he dropping? Is he not dropping? I don't know. Is he dropping? Doesn't matter. Nobody blocks 22, stupid. God, I love this. This is so funny. But he's not, I mean, is this a is this a missed, a missed assignment here or is this just rogers no, this is a this is rogers go, go back this this play right here i guarantee you it's sitting in his memory somewhere like cannot compute because the last time he threw the interception and now he's getting hit from behind and he's like wait a minute what it's just he threw that ball so fast last time that he didn't realize that harry was unblocked by the way here, Van Ginkle did drop again he did of course he did why not do it again? I mean, let's see what happens. I bet you he throws something else. Oh, wait. <laughs> Throw something a little bit longer, and that guy will catch you. <laughs> this is technically, we could pick this up, but we would never. Because like I said, we would always go three for three over here. We're sorting this to the front side with Simpson. He has 44 and 51. And then Tyron, you're stuck on the end. But what is interesting is if you watch 58 Rush, watch it. I used to hate this. Because it kind of makes you look. Tyron's By the way, the- uh, Gr- Grenard is third in the NFL in pressure so far this year. Dude's on a revenge train. See how he stops and he kind of pulls Tyron? It's because Tyron, once Tyron touches him, he knows he's not rushing. And he could continue his kick to Harry. You know what I'm saying? 
Right. But what they do is they stop and they kind of pull you forward a little bit. And that little pull takes you way off your track. Like right there. You're done. Not that you're going to get Harry, but you could at least try and throw a hand on him. You could throw a hand on him or something. Yeah, yeah. But this is, once again, this is chess playing chess, dude. This is, you can't pick this up. This is the flavor of the day. We've gotten an interception. Now we've gotten a sack on it. Like, it's just going to start getting a little bit worse. Let's keep running. I don't even remember what I put on here, but let's keep running these. (laughs) Let's throw on. So we got a couple tight ends over here. Doing the kick start to the motorcycle. (laughs) I used to love making fun of those dudes, blind dogs. Oh, oh yeah, I, I Ivan remember Pace. this one. I remember this one. Go back, Ivan Pace. This one's great. All right, this is simple duo, right? We we love we, Mackie. How much do we love duo? Duo is uh, is definitely your favorite. Duo, is one of duo, my favorites. Too. Duo is a thing, man. This is why we. I'm more of a right. whammo guy myself, personally. So, but uh, yeah, this is kind of interesting, and it's kind of <laughs> fun at the same time because if anyone's kind of on a interesting block here it's the front side guard because remember how i said duo is a lot like zone you we get a lot of combo blocks the minute that harrison phillips moves off the center like that it kind of takes him puts that guard on a big island so now the center's like i can't work with you i'm gonna go work with the backside guard so the technically all his help now goes to the backside guard and if it gives harrison phillips a three-way go but it doesn't really matter because here's what happens go ahead and roll it we got our, what's not a tray, it would have been, a, we called it an eat. So a lot of people have different names for it because a tray would tell you to go backside, but an eat would tell you to go frontside between the play side tackle and the tight end. They're going obviously up here to uh, Cashman. The guard front side, see how I said now you've given Harrison Phillips a three-way go? He basically mm-hmm. stands the guard up and is like, oh, what's going on back here? That's why the minute you move him off the center, it puts that guard in a real bind. Like that guard has to either just down block you right now and make you decide, or he has to take you up like this because you did movement. But what happens here is, and I think this is, we didn't talk about this on OLC, but that little movement from Harrison Phillips, pause. What it does is backside, I would not be thinking that my center's coming with me. Remember how we were kind of getting on Simpson for burying his head in here? When I walk up here and I see this three technique over me, I'm instantly thinking they're in an under front. So I'm thinking they're just going to ace it back and I'm going to be man on this by myself. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm not totally pulling Simpson out of this because the minute that zero hits it and my center comes back, I have to pull out right now. So and real quick, just to back up. So, all right, in duo, it's center guard comboing down lineman up to linebacker, right? Correct. So if linebacker, if linebacker pace sticks his nose in faster, that's on that's on guard here to get out there quicker, right? Like, isn't that his? Go back real quick. When you see Ivan Pace start to like, like he's about to walk up. You see how seventy six eyes are down. Terrible habit because you can't see anything. You're supposed to see the picture. It's going to tell you a story, and you're going to know what's going to happen next. But when your eyes are down and you don't see this, because he does a great job initially of coming inside. It takes inside footwork because he probably sees the lean. And I go back a little bit. You can kind of see 99s leaning a little bit. And when you're on the field, it's a lot more dramatic. You can see that there's just a lot of weight on that hand. You're like, oh, he's definitely going inside. So he protects himself with his inside foot. But what he does wrong is he buries his head in there. And you'll see it on the next frame right there. Right there should never bury your head in there, ever. Your feet always save you. My feet and my hands will always help me in a block. But what he does even worse is the minute that you see Joe Tipman come back on this, he should fire back right now, but he doesn't, and he's late on this blitz. And this is a simple, I mean, will minus B, and you're just coming right through. the. the I mean, that's... that's it, it's shit. also on the, on the Vikings defensive side, it just seems like a lot of the chaos is caused by... It's like one player setting up another player for success. Correct. Like you mentioned, so 99's job here is essentially to dive into this A-gap and make it so that the guard has to at least come along for the ride for a minute. Correct. Thus opening this wide open. Because he, he knows, I'm assuming that the down linemen know that pace is coming on this. No. Whether it's a pass or a run. Tip, Tipman knows, but Simpson doesn't know. Because if he know if he no, knew, I mean, but he like would, the Vikings defensive players, oh, of I'm course saying. they know, and that's yeah. one of the things is they know it's a run, and the one how do you stop the run game movement? Any movement in the run game that's not well versed or well ran through will slow you down because you're not used to it. 
Look at this. Here's another. Uh, Poor dude. Rogers. God, this guy's <laughs> running around, running around. I neck It's getting smoked. Dude. Metallic. That's why I said, dude, I don't Almost think one it. receiver is going to help you. I mean, you need you need two guards. Got two guards in free agency somewhere. So Cashman coming in hot here. Kind of blows this thing up. It's great effort. I love. And then he comes oh. back and gets a Pete. Look at that play. That's a, dude, that's Look at that that's energy. That's a try-hard white guy right there. That is yeah. the tryest, hardest white guy <laughs> I've ever seen. So for those that don't know. Go Gophers, NFL dude. Room, Row the boat. Sky you might. Anytime you see a white defensive end, the coach is going to look at you and be like, try hard white guy. You're going to be like, got it. Like the whole time. This is exactly the example. I'm going to run through your face. I'm going to back check you. I'm going to do a spin. I'm going to come back around and I'm going to Batman fucking saucer my ass over here. Wow. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> this guy. He's having a hell of a season too, man. I'm excited for him. He's but, everywhere. Dude, I'm telling you, disruption, right? What what what's the one thing Aaron hates the most? We see him roll his eyes more than anybody. He hates being disrupted. He's the he is he the it. worst body language yeah, quarterback? Jay Cutler had him. that title belt for a while, but I think I think no, old Aaron. I think you guys had Jay wrong. He just has that dumb, stupid look on his face all the time. <laughs> he's got I, I love Jay bitch Cutler. Face or whatever. Yeah, I think he's great. <laughs> I just think that Aaron Rodgers rolls his eyes one more time. If I was his old lineman, I guarantee you, I would have said something by now. But like, hey, you look like my mom. Knock it off. Yeah, Roll your eyes like helping. my wife. Stop. It tilts the head back with the mouth <sighs> open. Like does the on, does dude. does the bend over? You're like, did you really just bend over? Look at that. You know what I love? Look this at this what, twist here. This, this is what I love. I love when you hit quarterbacks. I love it because it just pisses them off. <laughs> like so the here we when have a quarterback th- would get hit, we would just laugh at him and be like, dude, shut up. It's a football game. What do you want? What do you want? You're from? gonna get hit, buddy. You're gonna get hit. By shut the way, credit to Rogers that terrible body weight landing on the quarterback 15 yard penalty last night that was he was asked about it at the podium he said yeah that's a ridiculous call that is not roughing the passer so thank god for that right those refs need to be fired terrible all right here we go so grenard comes around (laughs) bring it back 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 look at this chaos i know what what did we say versus overload so overload here we've got 58, 43, and then uh, 52 Jihad Ward here, right? So let me guess. We're we're sliding to the left, right? Well, we're going to go 5 0, but what are you expecting as an O lineman? Well, games. So games we're going, if, twist, baby. if you've got overload all these dudes over here, it's likely that this gap is being filled by a twist of some kind, right? Correct. Right. Or at least you should get- at least be prepared for it. Correct. They're going to get you to slide way out here, and they're going to bring somebody back in late just to see how well everybody moves their feet. And at times when they used to do this to me, I used to feel like they were picking on me, and I used to get really mad. And just you'd have to like pick your feet up faster, and like you just make it a challenge. But it's a great job right here by Cashman holding um, – what's his name? Uh, dude from USC. God, I can't even think of his – Elijah uh, Vera Tucker. Vera yeah. Tucker. Is a great job holding him. See how he's not really doing anything, and Elijah's kind of like, I want to get over there, but this guy's right here, and what he's doing is he's yeah. mirroring the back, stupid. Like, he's, he's not looking at you. He's looking at the back. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's Brees, look, Brees Hall. Look, watch. Brees Hall goes out. Watch. He goes out. See? And he thought I was kidding. The, yeah. This Go back. This whole thing, before I say who really messed this up, could have been avoided if Vera Tucker would have just dropped his balls and came over here and just destroyed somebody. But instead, he totally forgets that the back's behind him, and he's like, "What's this guy doing? What's he doing?" <laughs> oh, so he's got so he's he's staring over here, and hey, if hey. he could crunch down on Grenard over here, right? Chess while they're playing checkers, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this, it's amazing man. It's so okay. Bad. So, something right, else. Let's, let's, my let's, let's my talk, amateur talk. eyes notice. Let's Jihad talk. Ward. It, it, yeah. You know these guys here. Jihad Ward and Van Ginkle. It mm-hmm. looks to me like they're. Uh, this is designed for them not to rush Aaron Rodgers, mm-hmm. but to just push this way. They're setting up. Uh, it's This is all designed for Grenard, right? Correct. Yes. Okay. So what's going to happen is if this is run properly, and I haven't really noticed what Ward's done, but if he does the right thing, he's going to veer out to the right and pull the center or the guard with him. Perfect. Yep. Just like that. See how he pushes on the guard's shoulder? He's pushing the guard out. And this is one of the things I talk about in my gym with my young rookies is it's not the guy that you see that you should be afraid of. It's the guy you don't see pushing on you. And this is a great example. Pause. 
See how Ward's pushing into the side of him? He's basically clogging up this entire thing over here, but it's not clogging anything up because see Grenard's coming around. And what have I told you, Mackie, about pass pro? If I were to look at Joe Tipman right now, what would I want to tell him? You don't want your hips to be facing correct. Per, uh, uh, I, I need to see your belt across buckle, the yeah yeah. I need yeah. to see your belt buckle because when you come back to pick up this twist, look at that. He's too flat. Number one, he is way too flat. You're leaning. You're extended. You don't even move your feet. This is one of the things that gets young players. They need to get off the ball square. Number one, guard center. Punch the shit out of these two. Like guard, go back. The guard almost looks like he tries to punch two guys at once, and it's like, you don't need to do that. Trust that Joe's going to get off the ball and punch Ward. You get off and punch Van Ginkle. See how he's kind of like doing that. We used to call this the airplane. And <laughs> Coach Solari, yeah, Coach Solari used to say, never, you never want to look like an airplane, stupid. You'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, because you're trying to block too much, right? And that's what you end up looking like at the end. And all of a sudden, now we got Ward's free. We got Grenard coming around. Like, you got to just punch the penetrator. Punch your penetrator. The center will punch his penetrator. And if you do that, but if you don't, and this is why I keep saying, I don't think one receiver is going to help. Because if you can't block these guys up front, what the hell does one guy running down the field going to matter? Look at Justin Jefferson out there. It doesn't matter. You can't get more than two seconds to throw a ball. This is. A, I think this is the last of, mercifully for Aaron, Thank getting God. crunched on this real anyways go back real quick it's funny that you maybe say it's that. not actually it looks like i have another one there too okay yeah, we did we did some fire with fire okay so hey this is uh <clears throat> sorry it kind of blacked out on me this is play action now look at this right here what front is this pause so it's a see if i can study up here it's a jam front here mm. Mm. or is right it there. because the because the mm. Go one more to the left. See that guy on the left over Tyron? My left? Yeah. Yeah, right here. He makes it an under. Okay. See how he's on the tackle? It's a guard bubble. There's a bubble over the guard to the left, but there's not a bubble to the guard on the right, which makes it an under. Number one rule out of under is what? Pressure. Pressure comes out of under. It's the biggest pressure defense. It's the same damn pressure they ran last time. Is anyone going to notice that? Notice how we keep running the same plays over and over. It's like the offense. We're just going to keep running it until you figure it out. Now, what's so funny about this? Go back. You got a 215-pound dude rushing a 330-pound offensive guard. And at times in our gym, the guys don't understand me when I say there's a time to be a lamb and there's a time to be a lion. When do you need to be a lamb? When you look across and you see DeMarcus Ware. You need to, you need to be humbled. You need to be smart and you need to be fucking savvy. When you see Ivan Pace hit that B-gap, I'm like, little man, it's going to be the worst day of your life. I mean, I swear to God, you have to get after. You cannot let a linebacker do this to you because now everybody's going to try that on you. Everybody's going to be like, oh, we're just going to blitz a guy off the edge. He's not good in space. He's going to jump way out here, right? Like, dude, this is too simple, yet it's getting home. It's the frustration. Mm -hmm. It's the everything's building. It's the we're being blitzed. Is he coming? Is he not coming? Is he a G? Is he an under? It's, it's, there's so many questions that eventually you lose focus of the main thing, and that's playing your game. I'm going to give you one more here. Dude, this, is, to, this, this is what, what, Harrison, when Harrison Phillips, Phillips is just here. running through. <laughs> you're like no way no way here we go so here, here's harrison phillips so now we're in nickel we're clearly in nickel we, we took out our big nose tackle we are in an over front this is the mike zimmer speciality everybody loves over pause we talked about this and i'm going to give this guy a lifeline in the room when it came time to finding him i would have been like We'll give you a little leniency because you get stepped on by your center. But what he should have done was come down a little bit firmer and less down. Watch how big of a step this first step is. <sighs> big dog. <sighs> big dog. Boo, where we going? You can't, you can't go far enough that you're getting in front of the center. You know what I'm saying? And what it does is when he does that, go back, it brings his outside foot and brings it way in. And so now you're overcompensating. And in this moment, I've done this. You panic. 
And you're like, oh my God, what do I do? Right? Because it's a full grown dude and you've completely missed him. Like, if I could tell you what he's looking at right now, he's looking at his paycheck getting burned by the owner. (laughs) He's like, how do I fix this? Right? I'm in pure panic mode. I went way too far, way too fast, and now I am way too flat. Pause. It's okay. Brees Hall will save me. <laughs> but why doesn't Brees Hall save him? So listen. Does Brees Hall not listen, see this? Or is listen. he looking at 51? I used to ask the running backs the same thing. I'd be like, hey, why wouldn't we get beat like this? How come you don't step up in there? Just a little chip. <laughs> They'd be like, just a little. hey, man, that's your goddamn job. <laughs> <laughs> he leaks right. out. Oh, man. Yeah, just a yeah. useless route. You're really going to catch a ball when you run by the nose guard coming straight on your quarterback. What an idiot. No one's so, getting the ball, dude. So now this is this is not the greatest offensive performance by the yeah, Vikings here. Right. And the, the Jets are making their comeback. Vikings need some points. On This is like the third game where the Vikings have had a huge lead and things start to go haywire in the second half, and you just need some points on a drive in the fourth quarter. Let's roll yeah. it. Let's go, baby. Number one, what do I love? That is a ridiculous pocket. Route. <laughs> that pocket, man. Oh, God. Talk dirty to me. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Look at that, dude. Is that Quentin Williams? Mm. Are we sure? Oh, man. He sure was talking a lot of shit last night. (laughs) I see him talking during this game. Him and and Dawkins, right? Yeah, the last person I would want to fight was Deion Dawkins. I'm just going to let you know. No, no. Yeah, no. Uh, Listen, I love this. And what's great about all this? Pause. See how square everybody is? See the difference? Now, don't get me wrong. Our left guard's a little turned, but what's our what's our running back doing? Is that our running back dropping a shoulder into that all pro? Yeah, let's back it up. Listen, if it's one thing I know, it's at times everybody's going to get beat. You're always going to get beat out there. It's when your friends come to save you. See mm. that right there? It's when they come to save you that big things happen. We just saw what happens when you don't step in the line of fire. Your 42-year-old quarterback gets ripped open. But if you can just get the guard back on, screw it. We'll throw a 45-yard ripper down the field. Dude, this is a very big team game. The teams that are winning right now are showing that. Everybody's playing at a high level. Yeah, Sam took a lot of hits. And I think it's really convenient that they kind of played some of their worst football over there because I feel like that goes unlooked at times. You know what I'm saying? People aren't making a big deal about it because it's like, ah, it's the London game. It's a London. It, it, it's saying? a great point, dude. Every time Everybody. someone plays like crap in a London game, it's like, well, you know, it's, a uh, it's just kind of, it's, it's a London game. Weird they things happen in London home. games. Yeah, yeah. their wife and kids are at home. What do you expect? They're going to play like <laughs> shit. Like, they're not excited. Like, but it, it's one of those things where it's like, I'm not concerned as long as I never see it again. Right? Like, I get it. I've been to London. It's terrible. I hated the food. I hated the people. It just wasn't my thing. I wanted to play over here. Once again, back shoulder. Look at this, man. I'm just gonna be honest. If you're not gonna, if you're not gonna pressure the guy, you might as well just let him walk it into the end zone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Look at this. Once again, go back. I guess it's not really back shoulder. It's just right into his bread basket, but right into the belly button. All right, they run a little twist up here. Once again, go ahead. We're in twelve personnel. We're trying to we're trying to show some sort of run formation. We're over here like, yeah, we're gonna run the ball. Man, I should not? say too for for the audience um, when Booney refers to like eleven personnel or twelve, it's the first number is the number of running backs. The mm-hmm. second number is the number of tight ends, Correct. and uh, the third number, which isn't part of it, is the remaining up to five. So like, there's five skill position players. 11 would be three wide receivers because one running back, one tight end, three wide receivers. In 12, it's one running back, two tight ends, two wide receivers. So if you ever yeah. hear that on, on the show. And and it could be called a million different things. It could be called the uh, like the symbols on the cards. Ace, or uh, not ace, it could be like clubs. It could be spades. It could be diamonds. They have different personnels, but the most common is the number because it's the easiest to know. But 
this is 12 personnel. We line up into a wing and now look at them. They're like, holy shit, wait a minute. They're not in a wing anymore. What are we doing? Oh, my God, they're passing it. Here we go. Go back. Left guard. Brendel, right? Blake Brandle. Come on down, buddy. Come on down, bud. I'm going to tell you the same thing my coach has told me. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> You're getting the center picked, bud. You're getting them pickied. No, I'm kidding. This is tricky, but at the same time, it's Quinn and Williams. Go back. I don't mind the jump set because I always had a th- I always had a theory in my head, and it was more like a formula. If the guy is bigger than me and faster than me, I must jump him because I would never want someone bigger than me or faster than me to get going. I love how he jumps him here. I love it. I don't love how you overset him. That's mm. stupid. You have just given him the inside, which if anyone doesn't know this, now you will. It is the weakest point of the offensive lineman, the inside shoulder, because that foot is up. It's not back. It's not bracing. It's just balancing me, right? So the minute you go inside, and Quinny Williams is probably one of the strongest people in the NFL. I mean, look how big he is. The minute he goes in there, you don't really have a lot. But what it also does is it picks your center. And that's why they say if you're going to f- switch a twist – You must punch the penetrator because if you don't, that penetrator is just going to pick your friend and then his guy becomes free. It's not so much that you gave up the sack. It's that you almost let your friend give up a sack. Remember, we are the one for all and all for one up front, right? It's not that I did a great job. It's that we did a great job. And this is not doing a great job. See, and I'm not even mad at Bradbury because he does the same thing. He jumps him. He's like, this is a big dude. I'm going to jump the shit out of him. But if my guard would have punched him, this gets this gets switched easier, but go back one more time because who else keeps stepping up here? And I tell you, it's simple things that make me like players, and people don't understand why I, why I like certain people. But every time you step up here and you throw a shoulder into somebody not wearing purple, it really makes me respect you. Right there, save a life, Ty Chandler, right? Yeah. Dude, save a life right there. That that hey, that that job. hit right there allows Sam Darnold to throw this ball because if he's not there. 54, I think that's Kinlaw, right? He's just crushing around. Mm. Dude, he's coming right. And look at that. We're 25 yards on the field. You're too late, homie. I'm telling you, man, It's it wasn't pretty. A win is a win, even when you're 3,000 yard, 3,000 miles over the sea. And it's hard to do over there because, dude, it is way different. Like, you're in the countryside and you're like, boiled chicken? What? <laughs> you're like, dude, just somebody potatoes gave potatoes me- cooked? <laughs> I, I swear to God. I will never eat fish and chips again because when you're over there, you're like, do you just have fish and chips? I'll just eat I that. will say, I will say, my wife and I, we love ourselves some Brit's Pub in Minneapolis. And I don't know if this is like a, I don't, I'm, my naivety here. So someone invented with the chips, which are French fries, instead of ketchup or some other, you know, American uh, common sauce, curry, dipping your chips in curry sauce. I'm going to pass. Game changer, dude. Game changer. No, I'll I'll invite you over. And the European food. (laughs) Listen, the city's awesome. Piccadilly Square was sweet. All that stuff was super cool, but it is so hard to play over there. And then, like, when you're drinking the water, they're pouring them out of water bottles. (laughs) You're like, why don't I just take the water bottle and drink that? Never mind. Go ahead. Pour it in there. Let's just go back to to the States. Yeah. Uh, It was great. No, and uh, seriously, and I know we always do these kind of quickly, but this week, this is my number one concern. That two-headed beast in the backfield. I'm it's legit, you right now, and the and the Vikings. It's legit, dude. It's, it's been legit. <laughs> the, but and the Vikings are, I would say, likely to be without Aaron Jones. So you've got Detroit with their now. Detroit's without Aiden Hutchinson too. So and I'm glad you. But brought they that do up. have two amazing running backs I and the best offensive line. That's the problem. Like when he talks about fighting fire with fire, he's not wrong in the past game. Yeah, it's easy to throw a lot of dudes up there all around and do you know what you're going to do. If it's third and manageable every time and they're just going to continue to run the ball, they're playing chess, you're playing checkers. Like you're you're going to eventually have to fight that beast. Like the coach has said, eventually you're going to get pulled into the back alley and you're going to have to swing really hard and you're going to have to prove how tough you are because these teams come out of nowhere and they're like, 
we're not going to dance with you. We're going to fist fight you. And you're like, yeah. shit, we weren't expecting this. But And, the, the and same- that's the one thing game flow wise. Like the Vikings have only trailed for three minutes all year. Right. Uh, San Francisco ran the ball pretty well on the Vikings, but they haven't been in a situation where mm. maybe they're yeah. down by seven or down by Dude. 10 and the opposing team is just going to run it and run it and run it like that. We haven't seen that yet. I'm trying to think. And I, I had it written down. Did the Lions, they rushed for like 200 yards this week, didn't they? It was, yeah, I think in that neighborhood. So they had, they had 500 yards total, and, and David Montgomery had two touchdowns in the first. I mean, they were, dude, that's the thing. It's like, if they get going, it gets scary. And then it's like, wow, like you said, if you don't have Aaron Jones. Now, not having Aiden Hutchinson, that's massive. Like, dude's number one in the, in the world right now for number mm-hmm. one turning a defensive up. But here's what I fall back on again. And I don't know if anyone saw this, but after the game in Dallas, they gave a game ball to Dan Quinn. Or not Dan Quinn, uh, Dan Campbell. And they were like, this is our rock now. And I think what they were referencing was, it's not Aiden anymore, it's going to be you, dude. And so now it's like, they're going to be playing for this guy. And that's another thing. Like This team is all about emotion. They're constantly bringing each other up they're constantly like going to the edge and they're like burn the boats and it's this is who we are and it's like i don't know that knocking one guy out could knock that whole team out this team is different right like they're not aiden's down and they're like we get it we lost one he'll be back next year the boat keeps going and it's like i don't know that they know that they've lost him yet like they're just they're a different breed man but then you look at the vikings and koc and he's just so chill and he's just like ah all right Whatever, sure, huh. okay. Like it's, he's never yeah. faced. Dude, I'm telling you, it's the clash of the titans. I am so pissed. It's at noon. And did somebody say that the Jets Steelers game is that the night? That's game? the Sunday night game. Yeah, you could blow my brains out right now. I mean, you could just do that. <laughs> well, well, I'm excited for that game. Right? Oh, I'll bet you are. But yeah, we can't get. A I think three to I seven think, game. I can't wait. I think we can flex games soon. I don't know that you can flex a week seven game, dude. Uh, but you can we can start flex. There's two or three games on the Viking schedule. You know that what? You we can start flexing right now. And you tell me how many people would be like, "Oh no, we wanted to watch the Steelers." Go ahead, you tell me. There's a game we were going through the schedule on yesterday's Purple Daily, and I can't remember which one, but it's like one, it's one of the November or it's either the Vikings and Falcons or the Vikings Packers in December. And we were looking at okay, what's the what's the Sunday game? There's a Browns Dolphins primetime game in like December right now. No, there's not. Just just hey, flex it back right now. Just, no, just there's not. Flex it out. Yeah. <laughs> I promise you after week It's week time two, for some <laughs> They were like, yeah, no, this is this ain't happening. It's out. It's Dude. time for some James. <laughs> oh man. Anyways. Hey. Good talking always, football with you, my friend. Always a pleasure. Dude, next week. Really good football listen we might have to go an hour next week like we're gonna i want both sides and I, listen let's I go through every, every single play i i will both watch sides the, i will watch the whole we can come the, the whole game who's doing the game is brady doing it it's uh no it's greg olson oh, greg God, olson because i love greg olson he was my one of my teammates and he was the nicest guy the biggest goofball i mean like just you dude was hilarious and I don't know if you feel like me, where sometimes you feel like Tom Brady's voice gets a little too like, "All right, bro, calm down." It's also weird because he now is a part owner of an NFL team. That's totally. Illegal. And Mar- Mark Davis came out too and said uh, he may not be able to play quarterback, but he can help us in the front office select the next. So now he's like, he's like in the front office and owns a team, and he's also like a commentator. It's kind of a weird vibe. You know, I gotta be honest. I didn't know that owners needed a side job or hustle. <sighs> yeah, his, yeah. Well, if your side hustle is three hundred fifty million dollars over Dude, ten years or whatever, I right? hate to tell you, but you're an owner. I think three fifty is what you're going to be making from that team every year. Like, <laughs> pretty probably right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Craziness, right? Yeah. No, I can't wait. Honestly, great week. So fun. Bikes are on it. It's going to be a test. Don't, Amen. Don't give up. Amen. He's the Rhino, Alex Boone. <laughs> 10 years in the NFL. Mm. Loved the Vikings so much. He and his family stayed here. He's now one of us. He is one of us. All right. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button and the like button on the Purple Daily YouTube channel. Just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. Come on, guys. Mm. Can, can